Director General of Health, Ashley Bloomfield, back with us. Good morning. Good morning. How'd you feel about Saturday? Oh, look, uh, a couple of things there. It was great to see uh, just over 130,000 vaccinations given. Huge effort, really, and... Um, and so that was a very good outcome, meeting our expect, exceeding our expectations. But I think the other thing was just that uh, sense of collective action and people getting in behind it and recognising, look, the vaccination is about both individuals, but it's also about the collective. So it was great to see that energy. First jabs, 39,000. You would have wanted more, wouldn't you? Oh, look, that's a pretty good figure, actually. It's nearly 1% of that eligible population, so that's given the numbers a really good nudge. Uh, but we, we don't stop there. We, we're we vaccinating every day. Last week, we will be vaccinating every day this week, so we just need to see those first dose numbers continue to climb. David Seymour said it was, in fact, at 39,000, the 21st best day for first jabs. Not that good after all. Well, we're, we're uh, further on in the, in the vaccination program, and we, you know the, the vaccination rates, first jab rates, were very high, especially through that um, first part of the of the Auckland lockdown, and that's great. Uh, and so, yep, it's a bit slower on the first jabs at this point in the in the program, but uh, they are still going up, and that's great. What do you say to New Zealanders who look at Dan Andrews yesterday opening Melbourne as of Thursday at seventy percent, and Perite, who's opening up Sydney even more? at 80% and we're still hanging in there locked down for 90 which we will never reach. Yeah, well, what I would say is they're in a different position and they've got hundreds, if not thousands, of cases a day. We are not in that position and we don't want to be in that position. So that's why we are aiming to have a higher vaccination rate before you know we, we start to ease things further. But their numbers are coming down in New South Wales, and markedly so, and the hospital system hasn't been overrun. Yeah, which is great. I think that's excellent. And in part, that's because they've got their vaccination rates up um, over the last month or two. And that's what we're doing. But if we can avoid uh, getting those huge case numbers and that huge pressure on our hospital system while we vaccinate, then I, I think most New Zealanders would understand that's a better course. Yep. Well, there's two different things there. One's the cases and the other thing's the hospitals. I mean, cases don't matter if they're not going to hospital. And in, if you look at Melbourne, for example, which is opening up at 70%, their hospital system is not being overrun. Yeah, and the, the best way to stop cases ending up in hospital is to have people vaccinated. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, we, we're holding the course here. Uh, we don't want to end up with, with literally hundreds or thousands of cases a day. And the fact is we can avoid that yeah. by getting our vaccination rates up before we open up. But what does it matter if there are cases? If nothing happens to them, if you've got the choice to be vaccinated and you choose for whatever reason not to be vaccinated and you get COVID, that's on you, isn't it? Well, it would be, except that we know unvaccinated people are more likely to end up in hospital. They put pressure on the hospital system and then the hospital system can't deliver all the other care people need. And I don't think, you know, it's not in anyone's interest to have no, of that course not. huge pressure on the hospital system. But, but, but that's in theory. In reality, and I'm citing Melbourne and I'm citing Sydney, their hospital systems are not being overwhelmed and they are open. Well, there's a difference between being overwhelmed and having huge pressure on the system. And we do know, and it's been widely reported, there has been huge pressure on their hospital systems. So, I, you know, I would prefer we didn't get to the point where our hospital system was overwhelmed, let alone uh, or having that huge pressure on it, if How we can avoid it. And vaccination is the way to avoid it. How are you feeling about Northland? Oh, look, um, we haven't seen cases over the last few days in, in Northland, which is good. And so I think that's a promising sign. Um, the, the challenge is still there are some known unknowns there because we still don't know all the movements of those cases when they were up there. Uh, we've given our advice through and the PM will make an announcement later today. Same story for Waikato? Well, uh, you know, Waikato is a little interesting. It's, of course, a soft border at that uh, south end, and we have seen some cases over the weekend. So that's uh, factored into our advice. And again, there'll be an announcement later today. See, where are we at with Auckland then? Because last week there was nothing, and there was nothing based on cases that have only increased in numbers in the past week. So then can we assume there is also nothing this week again? Again, there'll be an announcement later on. No, I know that, that, but, but yeah. I'm trying to work some theory yeah. through here. Well, well, what's happened is, I mean, there are two things. The case numbers increased through last week. They, you know, dropped a little over the weekend, but the R value means they will keep increasing. We want to keep them as low as possible. But the big thing that happened last week was our vaccination rates kept going up in Auckland and, you know, nearly cracking that 90% first vaccination is a, a really fundamental part of the decision making. And, and that, is, that is something tangible to you that is warranting a reaction, do you think? 
Well, the vaccination rate's always been a big part of the thinking, and um, uh, that's you know nearly hitting that 90%. It's a figure I've given, and many others are quoting, and the modelling shows is an important uh, milestone. So, once we hit that, especially fully vaccinated, that's uh, that's. Well, we're not we're, we're not hitting fully vaccinated. Uh, We've got one jab. Is 90% single jab yeah. significant for today? Uh, it's a, it's a good milestone, but we need people fully vaccinated, and okay. that's a few weeks away still. OK. Uh, international vaccination passports are available to Australians as of tomorrow. When are they available to us? Well, actually, people have been able to uh, uh, ask for a proof of vaccination to use uh, for international travel for some months here. We've been issuing thousands of letters a day to people. Yeah, but internationally, but, we're moving, linked, yeah. but linked in app-wise with IATA. So, in other words, it's a bulletproof, internationally yeah. accepted. When, when, when do we get those? Oh, that's well on the way. We've got our uh, the my, my COVID record that was announced last week, and that's going to have both a domestic sort of um, uh, QR code you can use, and also uh, a, a, a international pass that you can use that will be linked to the international regulations. So that's well on the way, and that'll be available late November. I don't like to moan, but that didn't work when I did it. Uh, was that asking for a, a letter, right? Or a, well, no, or, just, or, or just plugging in information on. and giving me an account. And when I got to my driver's licence, yeah. it didn't like it. I couldn't go any further. Yeah, look, I'm going I'm to let the team know about that because I, it wouldn't let me uh, put my driver's licence in either, but it was fine with my passport. I don't know if that means you and I are not, uh, shouldn't be driving, Mike, but um, I'll, ch I'll let the team know about that one. All right, traffic light system, when is it coming? Uh, well, there'll be um, uh, there's work happening on the framework, and uh, the prime minister, I think, will will let people know this afternoon about the timing around that. What's the R rate? At the moment, between 1.2 and 1.3, which means our cases will continue to grow. We're still going after each and every one, and uh, you know, isolating and contact tracing uh, as we go, just to keep those case numbers down. And if Aucklanders can keep doing what they're doing and just you know stick with it with the alert level three restrictions, that will be a huge help. Appreciate your time, Ashley Bloomfield, Director General of Health.